Grace, mercy, and peace be to you through our Savior, the Paschal Lamb, Jesus Christ. The legend goes that there is a Roman general victorious in a military campaign, and he was entering the city of Rome for his triumph parade. And as he rode in his chariot amidst the cheering crowds with slaves and soldiers carrying the spoils of war so all could see his accomplishments, a slave boy stepped out of the crowd in front of the procession. And rather than flowers or palm branches or a banner, he threw a skull in front of the horses of the general's chariot. The trumpets stopped blaring, the parade halted, the people fell silent with shock as they wondered what the retaliation would be or why this was happening in the first place. And the slave boy broke the silence by calling out, Hominum te memento, memento mori. Remember you are but a man. Remember, you will die. At those words, the general was humble of his pride in his own accomplishments. And humility being a Roman virtue, since then it became a custom that all who were given any form of celebration or parade was to have a slave in the chariot with them, whispering memento mori into their ear, reminding them of their own mortality, lest they too fall prey to hubris and forget their place confusing themselves for a god rather than a mortal man who will one day die. While it is entirely possible that these never happened, that as historians claim, this was a fable made up and added to the history books around the fourth century to insert some Christian moralism into Rome's history, this theme of remembering your mortality in order to confront death and face it with nobility rather than run from it this motif of memento mori has been present throughout the ages. It has been said that Puritans would keep a human skull on their dresser as a daily reminder that this day could be their last, that they should remain humbly ready for their inevitable end. It's a sentiment we were all reminded of six weeks ago when we received ashes on our foreheads. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Memento mori. Remember that you will die. So it is fitting that tonight we likewise find ourselves at a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Our Lenten journey is bookended with reminders of death, starting with the ashes ending on the hill of Calvary. That skull, the emblem of death, becomes our final destination. For we all know the wages of sin are death, and justice demands payment. This has been our end point ever since humanity fell into sin. Our inevitable fate has been this place of the skull where life's final breath gives way to the cheer chilling grip of mortality. And as much as we talk about finding our reassurance in his death for our sake, let us make no mistake what is actually happening tonight. He is not play acting. He is not an illusion of a person pretending to writhe in agony to demonstrate how we would suffer if not for him. Our God truly became man so that he could die here. Because ever since Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit, our will has been turned away from him, and it has always been our lot to face death as he does now. For so sinful are we that when he came to teach us how to love, we killed him. And so he endures the painstakingly slow death of crucifixion. Utterly humiliated and abandoned by his followers, the only disciple mentioned to be at the site of the crucifixion in tonight's readings is John. Luke tells us the others were present but at a distance so that no one would confuse them as thinking they were there to support him. Yet still his concern is for the salvation of the human race that is currently betraying him. He shows his own humility and his concern, or he shows his own humanity and his concern for his mother, making sure she will be cared for after his death. He declares his thirst and he drinks the sour wine to ensure that every last bit of scripture is fulfilled for our sake. And then he proclaims the enduring word for us all to trust in. It is finished. Meanwhile, as we compare this to other gospel accounts, we are reminded creation itself is groaning under the weight of God dying in our place. The skies become utterly darkened, though it is midday. 
And after it is finished, the earth quakes. The people beat their breasts in mourning upon realizing what they've done. They have messed it all up. We all have. So now I find myself in my annual conundrum. After all, this is Good Friday. I'm supposed to turn this monument to humanity's sin, our failures, our betrayal of God, into something good, into a night to be praised. To find the way that Jesus turns this cosmic memento mori into a symbol of worship for the God that we just killed. And to find some beacon of light even as darkness covers all the land. And I suppose if I'm to do that, the best I can do is to look at that final message from Jesus given to us in John's Gospel. We hear it translated as, it is finished, three words, but in Greek it's one word, tetelestai. The perfect passive indicative of teleo, the verb form of telos. You may be wondering, what does that mean? Telos is a point of cessation, or the goal towards which a movement is directed. It's a word the ancient philosophers adopt to describe their metaphysical quest to understand the purpose of a person or a thing. In our current parlance, we might think of the word raison d'etre, maybe a more familiar way to understand it. When a hammer is striking a nail through the board, when a mill is grinding grain into flour, when a comedian is telling a joke that makes the audience laugh, they are in the process of achieving their telos, their reason of being. So when the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, goes uncomplaining forth and bears the weight of our sin upon the cross, when he takes all of our crimes against our Creator upon himself and endures the wrath of God in our place so that he is punished instead of us, when he heals us by his wounds to merit our salvation by his perfect obedience so that our relationship to God might be restored, making us into the children of God who can now cry to him, Abba, Father, he is achieving his earthly ministries, Talos. You know, the healing, the teaching, the signs and wonders, they have all been important, they have all been good in their own right, and they are all valuable in their own ways, but they are coming to fruition in this moment when our sins are put to death with him. When our separation from God, our condemnation and our despair die with him as he declares the fulfillment of the Proto-Evangelium and God's plan for salvation all comes to a point as the Son reveals the Father's love to us. Remember, too, that grammatical form I gave you for this word in his declaration. It's the perfect tense. We don't talk about that much in English, but linguistically, a perfect verb reflects an action that has been done completely, but with a focus on the enduring resulting state rather than the occurrence itself. So when Jesus declares to telestai and gives up his spirit, He's not saying, I'm about to wrap this up. He's not saying, it's done for a little while, but we'll have to renew this down the road. He is saying, it is finished, full stop. His mission has been perfectly completed with results that will endure for all of eternity. From this point in time, history has been irrevocably changed. His life is given for ours. Our forgiveness is won. Salvation is accomplished, and Satan's defeat is set in stone. What the Father has promised to do through his Messiah for all of history is now and will forever be finished. Through him, that darkness that covers the sky is transformed from creation mourning the death of God into the dark that comes before the dawn of a new day, where all of God's people are free to approach him in praise and worship for all that he has done, even the act of dying on the cross. Jesus transforms the place of the skull into the cornerstone of a new age where God's presence is made known throughout the world. The price is paid, so that now we can come to him with songs of thanksgiving on our lips as we feel the weight of our sins lifted from our hearts knowing that it is finished now and forevermore. And yet still, on this night, we remember the lesson of Memento Mori as it holds for us in this present age. We remember we are still living in a broken world on the fallen side of glory. We still do fall into temptation, and thus we still must one day face a temporal death of our sinful flesh as the wages of those sins. 
We still await that resurrection of the body on the last day. So we would do well to think of that from time to time rather than our constant quest to ignore life's inescapable reality to sanitize our daily living. We would do well to humble ourselves and regularly remember that we are only human and one day will die. Yet, should you feel so moved to be like a Puritan, to seek out an image of a skull, as so many people have, as a reminder of your own mortality, I entreat you to look no further than the skull of Golgotha, where Christ died for you. That place where it is finished and everything is transformed and made new, so that while we are still living on this earth, we might live lives of worship to our ever-loving God the God who declares eternal and enduring victory against all of his foes, the God who delivers that victory to us as his adopted sons and daughters, the God who forgave us even as we nailed him to a cross. When we know te memento, memento mori, remember that you are but a man, remember that you will die. But remember also that this is not the end you are a child of the living God. Remember that through his death you will rise again. For though the wages of sin is death, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we are preparing to go through the reproaches after the sermon, for many of you this may be the first time you go through the reproaches, as you go through your self-examination this holy weekend and as you reflect on the sins that required the atoning sacrifice of Jesus, Take heart in that transforming love of God who has taken the depths of woe and made them into an opportunity to praise him no matter where you find yourself in life. Take heart in the knowledge of his resurrection which extends to you now and throughout all eternity. Take heart that this darkness will pass away into the dawning of the Easter morning where we will once more gather together to sing his praises. Memento quod finitur, memento vir. Remember that it is finished. Remember that you will leave. Amen. <coughs>